ever with the athletic. <laughs> That's why it looks so time. old. <laughs> We're not even a studio. Yeah. How many years has it been you've been covering? Well, the this will be year 25 of the team. And yeah. I started as an intern with the team in 2000, so all but the first one in some regard. I haven't yeah. been there, but uh, the, 2017, the athletic, I've been to every game but one, you That's know, right. everywhere. Is the, so. is the organization in the best shape it's been since coming back? Yeah, no, that's a low bar, but that's an absolute <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's the king. That's Under, fair. Underhanded the confidence. Yeah. This guy got them yeah, all. That's an absolute <laughs> yes, right? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, kudos to the owners for finally sticking with someone. Right. Pick, picking the right people and sticking with them. Um, Andrew Barry's not perfect, but he's pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, I think he trusts the people around him. He and Kevin work together well. Um, you know, Kevin is, again, not perfect, but he's really good. I think the record reflects that. I yeah. think some of the changes he's made, that even when maybe he didn't want to, reflects that, right? Did really well last year. Yeah. Going to find Schwartz and going to find Bubba Ventrone. Yeah. Um, and adapting to what he's had on offense and having to change. So, yeah, I think they're smart people. I think there's good people. And I think that's reflected. Now, can they get to the next step? Yeah. Can they actually hang a banner of some sort? We'll see. But, yeah, I think you should, as a fan, have a level of faith that you probably have not been able to have. What's the hold time. up with contract extensions right now, Zach? Is, is there something holding it up? I don't think so. I okay. think it's just timing on that. I think, right. you know, I think the Haslam's about three, four weeks ago at the meetings came out and said. Right. So, it's yeah. Ask. so yeah. So there's a timing for all of that stuff. Okay. Fair enough. When you look at Stefanski, I, you know, he's grown on a lot of people. And I think it helps that you got two Coach of the Year awards, right? Um, is he res respected around the league as a person who has two Coach of the Years? Because I would think that when you have those awards, it puts you in a different little echelon and a different perch. Do, is he viewed like that around the league? I think he should be. I mean, I think, Garrett, when you frame it like that, you could say that usually goes to people who have won deep in the playoffs or, or something like that. But, yeah, people like Kevin Stefanski. He paid his dues. Um, kudos to the Browns and to Paul DePodesta for finding him. You know, he only got one other coaching interview ever. Yeah. He wasn't one of these guys that's on right. these lists for six years or, you know, is a hot name because he has an agent plugging it or, you know, something like that. He's very low-key. Uh, but I really think that he, over the last couple of years, has earned the respect of that locker room. And it's not a straight line. It's dealing with what they want with. I mean, he and Baker had a really ugly breakup. And a lot of people didn't want to talk about it. And he certainly didn't want to talk about it. Right. But then he went into this, which has been a mess with Watson, yeah. right? But guys have played hard. Miles Garrett has grown up. David Njoku has grown up. And I'm just telling you, last year there was a different vibe in that locker room. Is that the reason that this team stuck together and won in December? I don't know. But from the older guys to the younger guys, the new guys that have been around, there was a completely different vibe, and we trust what's going on here. You know, we're not going to be perfect every week. Before they went on that, that winning streak in December to get hot, you know, they lost those two road games. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they had to change three quarterbacks in four weeks and right. bring Flacco off the couch. So even when you take out what Flacco did, I think that speaks to the organization and specifically the head coach and the guys' buy-in of sticking together and being right. Because that's really what it comes down to, right? You want to have that one month. And they, they yeah. had it last December. Would they prefer to have it in January? Sure. sure. Of course. But they don't even get to the playoffs without that run. And they don't set the tone and the vibe of everything without that. I'm curious. You mentioned he only had one, Stefanski only had one other interview. How did the Browns identify him as the guy who was the right person to kind of change the tune of this franchise? Well, they're so secretive about everything that they won't give a full answer on that. <laughs> but Paul DePodesta is the guy that you connect the dots that had identified him you know, through that. So when you look at what Stefanski did, coming from basically the secretary for the head coach in Minnesota to position coach to coordinator, he worked for respected guys, uh, for Brad Childress, for Mike Zimmer, very different guys mm. in that regard. You know, got his chance to be the coordinator. He was first called up in December, like in a madness situation, right? And then he did it for a full year. So um, it, it, it's good, good scouting, you yeah, know, and right. then it's saying, and this has been the biggest thing here. Okay, we know what we've done hasn't worked. So how does it work? How do we connect the dots? And I think that started with putting Barry and Stefanski together. And obviously that first year, it was, it was wild. It was COVID. It was all those things. Nobody saw that team win on 11 games, but they did. And then what's most impressive is they kind of crashed back to reality a yeah. little bit. But I think what they did last year is they validated the roster. Everybody who said this is a top 6, 8, 10 roster is right. probably right because yeah. they did it last year with five quarterbacks, right? And, and yeah. now can you get to that next step? I think you have to have at least a little bit of trust in the guys at the top. Well, we started today's show talking about Deshaun Watson and his press conference yesterday. I know you were there, Zach. I took from that. A guy who sounded confident taking the lateral and progressive steps towards getting back to being healthy, hopefully for week one. There was some discourse afterwards whether or not 
everyone interpreted his words in the same way. Yeah. How did you take what Deshaun said, being there in person and, and being able to read his body language up close? And well, I would think the number one takeaway as far as judging that was he did feel like he's in a good spot, right? He did feel like he's on the same page with the doctors, with his team, with the Browns team, um, that he's going to be ready. So we're long past the ideal world situation yeah. with this guy yeah, and his sure. contract and whatever. And it's not ideal for him to miss the spring. But in the realm of a team that's goals are way down the road in those months we already talked about, yeah. it's fine. You know, so it's not comfortable um, not knowing quarterback throwing shoulder, talking about an injury that's not a football injury mm -hmm. because pitchers come back and they struggle with it and they don't get blasted by 280-pound defensive ends right. all the time, yeah. right? But, like, we're not judging this team on the second week of training camp if he suddenly needs a day off, right? right? right. Nobody wants to see Jamison there throwing it to the other team. You know, nobody wants to see <laughs> four quarterbacks having to play again. We love Jameis on the show. Sure, no. We and love Jameis. Yes. He can eat two and two, two touchdowns, two picks. Yes. It's, it's, it's even. Right. 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 But, you know, we know this team's ceiling is Deshaun Watson yes. being healthy, being almost fully available, and getting more progressively better. Yeah. And, you know, all the things that have been, we hadn't seen it. We finally saw him play well last year. This is a significant injury. It kind of dampens it. But there is, like, some real – We've seen it. Tangible Let's evidence. Let's see, you know, if he's in there, if he's healthy with this team they put around him. This can be yeah. an AFC contender. Zach, obviously we have, that have been here a long time and you longer than us, uh, we're used to the Super Bowl. Or the Super Bowl. We're used to the draft being the Brown Super Bowl, right? For so many sure. years. We're <laughs> yeah. talking on yeah. the – when I, Dustin and I were doing the show by November, we're talking draft. Well, the last couple of years we haven't done that. This year we barely talked about the draft at all, and it's eight days away. Part of that's they don't have a first-round pick. Yeah. But part of it is there's not an obvious position that they have to take. So they're really in a position to take the best player available. Right. Do you agree with that? And do you think, you know, where are you leaning towards what they might do? Totally. I don't even think it's that. They're in the position to take the best player for the future. There's not a guy, barring yeah. a bunch of injuries or a sudden change, that's going to start for this team on day one. True. That doesn't mean they won't, they'll won't. they close the door if a guy's mm -hmm. great, and that includes right. a second, third round you know, down the list. But they're looking for good players, premium positions, right? Um, are they going to take an offensive tackle for the future? I don't know. I think you lean towards trusting these guys, and it, you, you finally have a first-rounder next year. But when you look at defensive line, the value of that in Schwartz's defense, the old guys they have on the current yeah. defensive yeah. line, and then you look at the state of the receiver position, where Amari's great. And probably is still going to be great. But this is year 10. This is right. the age 30 season. And realistically, he didn't finish last year. I mean, he, he got back out right. there, but he wasn't the same yeah, guy. That's true. So, you know, they're, they're, they're hoping Cedric Tillman takes a leap. He might. Yeah. They're obviously banking on Jerry Judy doing what he hasn't done before. Yeah. They might be right. But I'm not closing the door on defensive line wide receiver. Um, that's where I kind of start there. Speaking of Jerry Judy, did you, what did you think when they signed the extension? Did you like it? Not like I it? fell out of my chair. Like, what are they doing? So that's how I felt. I just yeah. felt like this. I, I'm going to, again, this is where the benefit of the doubt comes in, but yeah. compared to past regimes. Sure. T t trading two third day picks and taking a shot on Jerry Judy, especially because that was probably your most realistic option. That makes sense. Yeah. I just think, let him be hungry. Let him play for that contract. Yes. To do it before he ever sets foot in the building, that really struck me as strange. Agreed. It just did. I, well, I was going to get to that a little bit anyway. Um, let's talk about their fiscal policy. Like, the Browns are doing things like, from our standpoint, that other teams aren't doing fiscally, right? They're, you know, playing a lot of upfront money, redoing contracts, renegotiating contracts. Is that something that comes from Dee Podesta? Is that something that comes from Andrew Barry? And is this something that other teams are doing? Because it seems like they're just doing mental, they're doing financial gymnastics every week with these contracts. Is this something that we, we might see other teams do, or is this just specifically to the Browns? Well, first and foremost, they're outspending everyone. Flat cash, they're outspending everyone. It's not so, close either. No, it's not close. So that doesn't discount De Podesta and Barry long-term vision. That doesn't discount, you know, sitting down and saying, we know the cap's going to rise. We know there's tricks you can do with contracts and, and all of that. There is a long-term vision. There are things you have to do to build a contender. But flat out, they have more money available, and they're doing it. And last year, what made it so good, Garrett, they picked out Miles Garrett. They pushed that money forward. He had a great year. Najoku finally had the big year. They yeah. pushed his money forward. Batonio and Teller, solid again, as they've always been. They yeah. come out healthy. You feel good about that there. Right? You do that with the wrong guy, you get in trouble. Well, Conklin was the one bad one. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, and we'll see. Eventually, yeah. it's not going to work. And right. eventually, you can't pay everyone, and you're going to have to really think about trading off Greg News. All that stuff is just conversation points right, now. Right. They don't have to. But they've, they've picked the right guys, but they – are outspending, they have outspent, and 
you know, they found guys in their prime that were on the roster. Miles Garrett, yeah. the, the, the best example. They just right. did it with Denzel Ward, who's going into year seven, but it's still the top of his game, premium position. And when you have that that kind of money to do it, you might as well do it and, and figure it out. They didn't. They haven't restructured Deshaun yet. They don't have to. Mm-hmm. They can. They might for the rollover. Right. But like. They're going to have him at a $64 million cap number, and right now they're comfortably their $14 million yeah. under the cap. It's amazing. That's, for all that the, is crazy, by the way. Right. <laughs> for all the criticism of Jimmy. They've bought their way there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but for still. For all the criticism of Jimmy, and it's all, it's all been deserved, or at yes. least 99.9% yes. of it. Is. 100%. You got to give him credit. He don't care. He'll spend. <laughs> yes. And, and, and in Cleveland, especially, we are not used to that. We got a baseball team that doesn't spend. <laughs> they have a great front office, but they don't help. The owner doesn't help them. Jimmy will spend whatever it takes. Uh, the me, fact that he's spe- spending more than Jerry Jones yeah, and these crazy. other big market owners is, is crazy. Let me tell you a story, Bull. So in a good year for the Browns, they're, they're not firing everybody or something yeah. doesn't go totally off the rails. We'll only talk with the Haslams on the record twice a year. Right. Once is in training camp, the first two or three days in a yeah. group interview. So there's six cameras around. There's 20 media people, whatever. Right. The second is at the owners' meetings yeah. where it's usually in a side room no cameras, four, five, six of us, depending on the year, right? And they know what we're going to talk about, the stadium, Deshaun Watson, the salary cap, whatever. So there's kind of like it. I don't want to say it's awkward, but it's they know what we're going to ask. Right. They have their answers, can whatever. Yeah. So we finally kind of break down the wall this year. We're in some room at the, ho- in the basement of the hotel in Orlando. And I forget what was asked of Jimmy, but he starts laughing and he says you can criticize us for a lot of things and i understand he said for spending money and commitment to the community you cannot and i just noted that right there like okay you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go deeper with the analysis i'm gonna say more but i'm gonna make sure this is there because that's 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 what he said we talked about it monday but you weren't here but jay asked what's the difference in how much the browns are spending this year in cash versus the next it's like 50 to 60 i forget the exact number yeah, that's insane. it's like 55 ish million dollars more than the second team yeah. in the nfl i wanted to ask about the stadium though zach because jason you obviously work with jason who's on the show and we've gone back and forth what he thinks is going to happen versus what he thinks is the ideal scenario in your mind if the haslams could have it their way what do they want and then what do you think at the end of the day will end up happening well i think what they would want is a dome down here but I think we're at the point where it's probably not feasible, right? So I think Brook Park is probably what is going to go in, in the dome. I just and I think it just makes sense somewhere. Mm-hmm. So Jason is more in the weeds and in the details of how it'll go, who will bend first. There's going to be negotiations on on all of that stuff. But I'm pretty confident, sp- specifically coming out of Orlando, when they basically made public what we thought. There's two options: to do a billion dollars down here still be outside, still have traffic problems, still be stuck on the lake and the highway, all that. I just think, I, I'm not yeah. saying it's ideal. I think it makes the most sense. You know, when you look at the Browns roster, <clears throat> you look at the coach, two-time coach of the year, you got defense player of the year, you got great defense, you look like you got everything moving in the right direction. But I'll be laughing and t- joking with these guys. It just seems like, yeah, the Browns get better, People in the division keep doing Yes. I mean. It's a gauntlet. It's like, is this the best division ever? Right. It, it's, it's worth discussing. Yeah. You know, and a, and a lot of times, right, they're in the NFL, quarterback gets hurt, you get tanked. Right. right. Some, there's a roster or two every year that everybody thinks they're good and they get old in a hurry or right. they were never that good yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. But, like, last year it lived up to it, right? Everybody thinks Pittsburgh is clearly the fourth best team in the division. They were in the playoffs again, yeah. right? When the Bengals got Burrow healthy and got hot in October and early November, it was like they can win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Well, they end up finishing fourth, but they get hot at the end of the year with Jake right. Browning, yeah, right? Right, right? Yeah. Right. No, I, I mean, realistically, I think the Browns prove they're a good roster. I think the Browns have proved they're a good organization. And I think if things go well, that they are a real AFC contender. That being said, you ask me to pick right now, I'll pick them third in the division. That's that's right, that's right, right. how good I think it is. Mm. Yeah, and, and and it's gotta be the only division I can ever remember where you can make an argument that all four teams can win double digits, not just over five hundred, yeah. but double digits. Yeah, there's like a fourteen year run or something, Bull, where a fourth place team has come to first in the NFL, and that's the nature of it, right? Yeah. So that happens this year and it's Washington or the Giants, we're stunt. Right? It's right. the Denver Broncos, we're stunt. Yeah. But when it happens in the AFC North, like any wow. team is 7 to 11 wins, and they might all four be right there again, right. you know? Yeah. The Ravens are a lesser team. Lesser yeah. on personnel, lesser on coaching. They're still darn good, right? Yeah. The Bengals are going to be better, mm-hmm. um, and, and the Steelers and Browns are, are there. They've made their moves. They were playoff teams. The Steelers might be a ton better on offense. Yeah. I, people were downplaying the Russell Wilson. I don't know. As flawed as Russell Wilson might be, he's way better than what they had. Kenny Pickett did not belong on the field against of the Browns. Of course not. Year. Russell yeah. Wilson cooked the Browns. Yeah, exactly. What's a more realistic outcome? 
the Steelers win the AFC North or the Ravens finish in last? <laughs> uh, that, I think they're both semi-realistic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they, they are. They could finish in any order. I think the Steelers could win the AFC North. I, I think they could. I, I think if they get the kind of quarterback play, just average plus, mm-hmm. and they solidify their lines, which they've been known to do over a 50-year yeah. period, right? Decent then, track record. Yeah. They draft seven defensive tackles <laughs> in line, maybe linebackers yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, George, P- George Pickens is high ceiling. He's high volatility, but he's yeah. high ceiling. And if you get him on the same page with the play caller and the guy yeah. throwing him the passes, why couldn't he take off yeah. and be one of the top guys? And they'll probably draft a receiver in the second round. It'll end up being a good play.